So last night your homework assignment was to complete the gizmo lab entitled RNA and protein synthesis. We wanted you to just kind of review the processes of transcription and translation. So we really wanted you to understand what does that process look like to build a protein. We know proteins are made up of a bunch of amino acids and that's what all of these little circles here are within this picture. And some proteins are made up of just a few amino acids, and some of them are made up of a long chain of amino acids that eventually fold and create the protein that our body needs. And so in this activity, we wanted you to go through some of the steps of making that. And so in the warm-up, it said, just as a construction crew uses blueprints to build a house, a cell uses DNA as plans for building proteins. In addition to DNA, another nucleic acid called RNA is involved in making proteins. In this gizmo, you will use both DNA and RNA to construct a protein out of amino acids. So number one says DNA is composed of bases A, C, G, and T, while RNA is composed of those same bases A, C, and G, but has uracil instead of thymine. So it says look at the simulation panel. So I took a screenshot of what that looked like over here on the right and it says is this segment a segment of DNA or RNA and how do you know? Well you have to look at the bases that are found inside of these segments and because the base T is there that lets us know that it's part of DNA. If this base here was U then it would be a strand of mRNA or RNA. All right, so problem number or step two says RNA polymerase is a type of enzyme. Enzymes help chemical reactions occur quickly in your body. Think back to our biochemistry unit where we talked about these. It says release the enzyme button and describe what happens. And so I took a picture of what the end product looked like. When we use the enzyme RNA polymerase, it takes these two strands of DNA and separates them. So here's the enzyme here, and it just went through and kind of separated them right down the middle where the hydrogen bond was between these two nitrogen bases. So in the first part of this activity, we wanted you to simply understand the process of transcription the first part of making a protein. And so a segment of DNA serves as a template to produce a complementary strand of RNA. This complementary strand is called messenger RNA or mRNA. So the question they wanted you to think about is what occurs during transcription? In the experiment it says like DNA, RNA follows base pairing rules. They wanted you to experiment to find out which RNA nucleotide on the right would successfully pair with the thymine at the top of the strand of DNA. So this was split and they were asking you if thymine was here, what base would pair up with T? Well, from the base pair rules we have learned, T will always pair with A. And so you could have clicked and dragged different bases over. None of them would have fit except for adenine. And then they wanted you to look at how did the other bases pair up. And so as you went through this, the A base should pair with U or uracil. The C or cytosine should pair up with guanine and guanine pairs up with cytosine. So this was how we started it and then they wanted you to look at the next three and so here's what you should have gotten uracil, guanine, and cytosine. And ultimately they wanted you to continue this process to see how it would continue to be built. And so in number three it says observe. In molecules of RNA uracil takes the place of the DNA base so the U replaces thymine. That's how you would know the difference between a DNA strand and an RNA strand, or at least one way. Now, they say to continue building that strand until they all have been used. What is the nucleotide sequence of the mRNA strand you built? They were asking you to just look at all of the different bases starting at the top and going down. So if I start with AUG, Remember, that's our start codon in transcription. 
which will code for a specific amino acid. The next three, C, U, G, is another codon that will code for another amino acid. And that's how the amino acids are brought in to make a protein. We look at the code on the mRNA strand. And I just group them in groups of three because that's how our body reads these bases. Okay, so now they're just saying, imagine if you had a strand of DNA that opened up and this was the sequence. What would the complementary mRNA strand be? You just have to think about what bases pair with T, A, C, and G, and continue those base pairs down the way. T will always pair with A. A usually pairs with T in DNA, but now remember we're working with RNA, so the T is replaced with U. And then the C always pairs with G, and G always pairs with C. So if you follow those base pairs all the way along, you get this code. So number six says, how would a change in the sequence of those nucleotides that we just looked at affect the mRNA being transcribed? So if there was a change here, they're saying, what would that mean for your mRNA? Well, let's say if this G here was a C instead, if this was a C, that would make this space a G. That could then potentially change the amino acid that gets brought in because this codon would be different. And so any change in the DNA would essentially cause a change on the RNA strand. Because in this picture down here below, each of these three bases is the codon that codes for an amino acid. So if the DNA changes, the codon is going to change as a result, and then your amino acids might change, which is what these gray circles are representing. All right, so part B of the activity says, okay, now we got to learn about the second part of protein synthesis, which is translation. So in the introduction, it just simply reads, after a strand of mRNA is built, Basically, we've taken the code from DNA and transcribed it to mRNA. Then it can leave the nucleus, exit the nucleus, and get out into the cytoplasm. The second stage of this protein synthesis is called translation. During translation, the mRNA is used to build a chain of amino acids. And so in part one, it says observe. Examine the strand of mRNA on the simulation panel. Every group of three bases on mRNA is called a codon. So in the table at the right, list the nitrogen bases in each of the codon. So here's what it looks like. Here's your strand of mRNA that is lined, out, lined up outside of the nucleus in the cytoplasm, and here is the ribosome that it's attached to. The ribosome is essentially going to read these bases in groups of three, so the first codon here is AUG. Remember, that's our special start codon that tells us to bring in the amino acid methionine. The next codon is the next three letters right here, CUG. The next three is ACC. And finally, we end up with UAG. So two says, predict. Translation starts when the ribosome, that big purple structure on the previous picture, binds to a strand of mRNA. Now we have a new strand of RNA called transfer RNA that begins to bring in amino acids into the ribosome. And each tRNA carries only one kind of amino acid. And so that amino acid is determined by the tRNA's anticodon, the three letters that pair on the tRNA molecule. So the question is asking, which anticodon do you think would attach to mRNA's start codon? Well, if you look here, the start codon was AUG. They wanted you to pick from the choices that were listed, and the only tRNA that matched AUG was the tRNA molecule that was UAC. So this is the tRNA molecule, and their three codes are simply called an anticodon, and then they carry with it 
the correct amino acid, that's what this yellow circle is, for this codon. And so then they want you to place two more tRNA molecules on your mRNA strand. So we would have placed another one here, which brought in this amino acid. And then here's another codon that coded for this tRNA, which brought in this amino acid. The amino acids start joining together in a chain. So these tRNAs come in drop off their amino acid, and then they leave to go pick up another amino acid. And so this amino acid will combine with this one, and then it will eventually leave to make that strand of amino acids known as that polypeptide chain, which will make our protein. So in number four, it says describe AUG as well as UAA and UGA is an example of a stop codon. Molecules called release factors bind to stop codons. Place the release factor on your mRNA molecule and what happened? Well, the amino acid chain was released from the tRNAs and now this protein or this chain of amino acids can form the protein and bend and um, bind up to eventually make the protein that your body needs. And so it can bend and form um, from the directions on here to make a specific protein your body needs, and then it can go to wherever it's needed. So number five says, why do you think the stop and start codon signals are necessary? Well, without those stop and start signals, there'd be no way to figure out where we would need to start making that protein and where to stop it. It's kind of like a set of directions. And if you don't have the blueprints or the directions to build something, you're not gonna know where to start and if you've used all the correct parts and the right pieces. So we need those signals to help us. And so to summarize the two processes of protein synthesis, transcription begins when an enzyme known as RNA polymerase splits the DNA molecule into two strands, which is shown right here. Then the complementary mRNA strand attaches to the DNA template forming the mRNA. So here's the mRNA right here and it's reading the code on the DNA and then it is smaller than DNA. It's only a single strand so it has the ability to leave through these little pores in the nucleus and then it can go out into the cytoplasm and park itself on a ribosome here to finish the second part of protein synthesis. And so once that mRNA strand leaves the nucleus, then translation can occur. The mRNA strand, which is right here, moves to the ribosome, and the first mRNA codon, known as that start codon, lines up with the ribosome. A corresponding tRNA molecule comes in and attaches to the start codon, and attached to that is an amino acid which are these little black circles here. A second tRNA molecule comes in and is accompanied with its amino acid, and it continues to build these chain one at a time until the entire protein is completely built, and then the cell can use it. All right, this is how proteins are made in our body, and we're gonna continue to talk about this in class. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Thanks, guys.